a little different. I cut my own hair in the middle of the night the other night. I don't know, just had an urge. My allergies have been awful, if you can see. They're just like hive central. So pardon the red raccoon eyes or whatnot. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you guys about um, a couple things that I have going on. And so first of all, that is, I have a fish room now, which is really cool. So, uh, hey, what's up, uh, Alonzo? Welcome. Come on in. I know people are filtering in. I was just saying that, one, pardon my congestion and my crazy raccoon eyes of allergy -ness, but we won't be focusing on me. This isn't about me. Um, but I had a couple things to talk about today. I wanted to talk about some cool plants that I got that I've done some videos on. And then also I already recorded uh, Tamaj, uh, I don't know if I've noticed you in, in here before. Hey, welcome. Glad to have you. Um, so I have some cool new plants, so I want to talk about those a little bit. I'll have videos coming out that are more in-depth, more like um, the history of those plants, the biology, the lineage, all that kind of stuff. But I've also trimmed a bunch of tanks, moved a bunch of tanks. Patricia, welcome. You're always on time. And sorry I moved around this live stream. I was during going to be on Joel's uh, Corvus Ocean's uh, Ocean's United Tanks of America. Let's talk about those plants. Love the details. All right, cool. We're letting some people filter in. You know what I'm going to show you guys uh, real quick um, is that I have moved all but three tanks from upstairs. I took apart two tanks, and right now there's two active tanks. We'll flip this around in a minute. Um, but basically... So this looks like fire hazard extraordinaire right now. There's an LED light on a lamp that's just set up because Rob from Flip Aquatics will be sending me Caradina shrimp any day now. And I have just some crystals in here just to test the water, make sure with a little bit lower grade of stuff that, that everybody's hunky-dory. And then I also have killifish in here. I am meaning that videos are always super informative. You learn something new in everyone. Well, thank you very much, United Tanks of America or Walter. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm working hard at that. You know, I'm trying to create content where maybe one or two a week at least are educational and then or historical or biological uh, chemistry whatever it may be and actually I have like 10 in the can right now ready to be uploaded at any time and then uh, I also have the updates of kind of what I'm doing and like things that are going on but for me this is a big one and that's why this isn't a scheduled uh, you know, usually I'll do my streams on like Thursday and Sunday or Tuesday and Sunday, but this is kind of a special stream, probably a shorter stream. I'm happy to answer any questions and all that like normal, but basically I am just showing y'all that I have a couple new setups. So up here we've got a pH of five going on in here and it's all bright well substrate. It's, it's, is designed, uh, for Caradina shrimp. Uh, for Taiwan bees, things like that. Rob will be sending some out. It'll probably be a big old flip sticker right here and probably rescape the tank a little bit. Uh, right now what I did is I took the opportunity of this tank needing to be set up and cycled and I used a cycled sponge. Uh, Yojo, welcome. Uh, so I took a cycled sponge filter, air filter, running on an airline and Basically all I have plugged in into this tank that is needed is the sponge filter and a heater. And the heater may not even be needed, but this is down in our daylight basement room. And so I want, it gets a little chilly down here and I was gonna show you guys real quick. So I actually have light that is at least as ambient to light up like this all day long in this room. So it's enough so that even algae might be an issue if I don't put the blinds down. But at the same time for shrimp and a lot of the fish that I'm raising such as these clown killies, the annulus killies, uh, that's not so much of a problem because it just works out that uh, you know, they they like the darker 
uh, lighting because they're from the jungles of Central Africa and Western Africa. But I put five killies in here. Betsy, welcome. I'll try not to make you dizzy. I know I spin your head round when I uh, when I do my podcast. I'm trying or vlog, whatever it's called. I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. Uh, so in here we have some frog. Let's see. Do we have frog bit in this one? No. We have frog bit down here. So we have frog bit down here. I have some funky news to report in this tank. And that is that, so we have the cribs in this tank, the Lakunja cribs, and they had laid 143 eggs right here, okay? All of a sudden, I moved the tank, and I don't know if it stressed them, but the eggs are gone after three days into their eggs. The female is no longer, there's the male, but the female is no longer protecting that cave, and she's protecting the katapa leaf and stick in the back there. So I don't know if it spooked them when I moved the tank. Of course, that was stressful. I lifted the 10-gallon tank, but it may have just kind of spooked them, and sometimes what they'll do is they'll put the babies or the eggs in their mouth, and they'll carry them. The other thing that I noticed is that there were planaria in the tank, and that's probably from overfeeding, but seeing as this was a shrimp tank, there was extra food in here, and then I had the leopard endler fries in here, and I just have one left, and my hope is that he acts a little bit as a dither, and then there's a few shrimp still boldly going where no shrimp should go, hanging out in this tank. But it's kind of a low light, and it's just the Lakunja cribs, and then one male uh, leopard endler in here. And I hope they lay eggs again, or that the eggs... Hey, welcome, James! Or that the eggs are hidden somewhere. It could just be that she hid the eggs somewhere uh, else, thinking that the cave was compromised, because the water got kind of cloudy when I... Uh, Filled it back up. I did kind of a 60 or a 40% water change, which they like low TDS. They like a little bit higher pH. So that was good. That's within their parameters, but it just, it wasn't optimal. Yo, what's up? Welcome to my Minecraft. Let's play. My name is Buzzfeed and today we will be doing some jailbreak life hacks in Unturned. Okay, I don't know what that's about, but welcome, Jacob. <laughs> if you're advertising your channel, that, okay, cool. Um, so in here, hopefully, yeah, hopefully she just moved them. If not, the other thing that could happen is that perhaps the male didn't fertilize them. And I doubt that because they looked like they were growing quickly and they were both in there. But... It's either a planaria issue, because almost all the snails, I miss like one or two, and like, I'll take care of that. Boy, howdy will I. Uh, so it's either that, or sometimes when they're new to parenting, although these are wild caught, so they've probably been adult for some time if they were caught in the wild, and they've been through quarantine, and they're still, you know, adults. Um, so hopefully... Hopefully, they'll either get better at parenting, or the next round, what I'm going to do is I will keep a closer eye on the eggs, and I'll probably take half away and put them in, like, an egg aerator or something along those lines. So, what I need your folks' help with is my wife said yes. It, it was like getting married all over again, right? She said yes? Okay, not that funny. But, so... I have all these tanks, or space for tanks. Working up here at six feet is not ideal. Uh, I could put a really low tank or some fry spawning things with some aeration in it. Uh, and here we've got a bookshelf tank. This one's only seven gallons and it's like awkwardly long and it's rimless. So ideally it may go on another little stand somewhere. But I do have this rack there's no plug in the wall anywhere in this side of the room. So I'm having to run an extension. I'll probably run that up and around. Also, the other nice thing is my laundry room and bathroom is right here around the corner. So I can, 
uh, wire it all in. Right now I've got all this stuff kind of set off above and off to the side of the tanks, but we've got surge protectors and a little uh, breaker thing. Um, in other words, keep it out of the living room. Well, I get to keep three tanks there. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so I'm thinking a 20 long here, a 20 long here. I left myself lots of room to be able to get hardscape in and play with nets and whatever. But I think I want to do a crib grow out tank and then have some sort of light dither fish like Killies or Ruby Tetras or something like that. And maybe Plecos um, that just hang out and will be innocuous. And then down here, I was trying to sell this square aquascaping tank, but it fits really well with a 10 on this. This shelf is rated to hold 1,750 pounds. Called up the company, they said it'll actually hold double that until structural failure, but I'm still staying under, well under that uh, regulation. But I worry with these kind of cheapy plastic PVC uh, clamped, put together shelves if you see how they, they work. You've probably seen them just for carports or garages and whatnot. But yeah, so not too worried about out all that, but I think we'll do another 20 here that's easily accessible. So we can do 20, 20, 10, uh, just under 10. And then I might move this guy up top since it's shrimp and I won't need to be doing intensive water changes and stuff. That's the um, other thing. Uh, D. Parsons, saw your recent video sharing your personal story. Thanks for that. It really means a lot and was insightful. You're brave to show your vulnerability. Well, thank you. Um, I'm trying to make a channel that is very transparent, and I want to make a community where, you know, folks, especially like, I'm in a, I'm blessed to be in a city where we have all sorts of fish folk and fish stores but I've also lived in smaller towns and I've also I mean none of my personal friends outside of fish club which I'm still kind of working my way into none of them are into fish and definitely none of them are into shrimp some of them appreciate fish but I would definitely say that you guys you know you're my friends you're my you're my peeps so I'm glad that the story resonates and I've had people contacting me that have ALS or they're you know having PTSD or whatever it may be and and the hobby means so much more to them than just playing with fish so I wanted to uh, reach out and tell people my side of that story and then also I'll tell you lastly what's going on here so I would like in the comments if you're watching this later um, or if you guys who are watching now want to comment on once it's uploaded just for posterity's sake because these comments are harder to go back and find what you think I should be doing here because the hope is I've got these Lakunja cribs I've got Maliwe cribs upstairs in the big tank and they can have up to 150 babies now granted they'll probably have 40 babies uh, or something closer to that but I want to grow them out into pairs get them to color up slightly and then uh, be selling those to fund the the uh, experiment that is all of this. Up here, I wanted to touch on this because I keep meaning to and not not talking about it because I have ADD. Yeah, I'm just kidding about that. I, I don't know if I have it. Whatever. But we've got five killifish in here. We have two males here. Uh, sorry about the glare. And then we have females, and they like this dark, really thicketed tank they only live in about a foot deep of water usually anyways but what's kind of cool is when it's just these killifish they swim down deep rather than hanging out at just the top like they do when there's other fish so they hang out at the top when there's other fish but we've got two males in here three females one snail and two shrimp two crystal shrimp and that's what's cycling this tank this tank is half water that is uh, already like live water from my other tanks that was at about 6.5 pH and then it's half distilled water uh, so that should help I'd leave everything tank wise how it is and use the top shelf for supplies yeah that's I think that's a great idea uh, especially like the other thing I'm thinking of is I might put some slats over this that so, so the pressure isn't I mean it's diffused but so it's not like every inch there's you know some pressure or whatever 
Uh, but what's going on here is, so the killifish are coming out because they'll eat baby shrimp. But, and so are the crystals. They're coming out because they'll be, they'll be going back in with some neos since I know crystals are hardy. But the female, uh, the female killifish hopefully laid eggs in here over the last few days. And the idea is I'll pull the fish out when I get Rob's shrimp and then they'll be hanging out up here and we'll hatch and the shrimp maybe i'll pull them out two days before like the day he ships out the order which may have been today uh i'll i'll then i'll then swap them out but here's a female killie here they're not as colorful so that's the plan and see how many with three females and, and two males if we got any killifish eggs in here they're super super teeny um your killifish guard your shrimp? That's cool. Uh, were you able to source a rack? Well, I mean, so I bought this at uh, Home Depot. It was on sale. I think with tax and everything, it came out to like 69 or 70 bucks. But it, it's, I could have paid half of that. Um, and yeah. Oh, and note on the earthquake front thing that you're talking about. I This is a beam here. And there's another one exactly since it's 36 inches. There's another one in this house. It's an older house, 36 inch uh, beam uh, stud uh, separation instead of the 24 that I think the newer houses have. In any case, I can uh, put some earthquake straps on there. And we're not doing 40 gallon breeders or anything like that. So it can, it's not it's not front heavy and it's fairly stable. So it'd have to be a big enough earthquake that I'm probably gonna be having major problems with other parts of my life that are more important than fish, like, you know, my house collapsing or whatever. So let me show you what else is going on up here. Like I said, this will be a shorter live cast. My wife just got home and I wanna spend some time with my wife. But uh, feel free to ask questions about anything as always. This is our time together between the other videos. So in here, uh, I have one, we have uh, another uh, crystal shrimp. He is a Michelin and he's basically a canary in the coal mine just to double check, even though the TDS, all the specs should check out in this tank. But before I put any of Rob's stuff in here that was a crystal, I wanted to make sure that he's gonna be okay. So I've got pretty much low TDS fish in here that like it slightly acidic, um, but the acidity isn't super important. That pH can change with all these fish. Hey, t Um but the female uh, crib we've got going on here, she's a morph um, from close to what they bred the Nigerian reds from. The sad couple is gone, and we have this tank set up. This tank, I'm going to be planting more on the bottom so that shrimp can can exist longer. You know, these, believe it or not, these ruby tetras are... Get a hold of me later, Carson Anderson, forgetting to message you. Yeah, dude, I'd love to chat dude, about stuff. Um, let's do that. Let's make that happen. Also, I was going to let you guys know that I went and checked out a fish room and that was cool or a shrimp room. Like a, a, it's a small setup like mine, but he has, uh, just, he's very, very, uh, diligent in how he organizes stuff. So let's talk about these rare plants that I was talking about. And I wish that, uh, YouTube allows me to, uh, focus and play with light contrast and so forth but it don't so we've got here an egyptian blue lotus it's not a true lotus it's a lily some people call them that um and the thing that i think is so rad about these is so look at look at this one it just looks kind of green with a little bit of brown or darker green but when you hit the light just right so if I change the lighting on this, it, it goes away and it's not as purple. And up top, they look solid. And so uh, 
Carson, I got these from Steve personally, uh, from his personal collection at Aquarium Zen, if you recognize them. They are hard to find in the U.S. I don't think anybody distributes them wholesale or, or you know, big time here that I've found because they're not just Egyptian purple or blue lilies. What they are is they're from farther south down in Sudan, Darfur, uh, Central Africa, which is having some real problems, obviously. And they are a uh, Nymphaea uh, micrantha, and they are a morph of that. And so they have this out of this world metallic pink, purple, and green, yellow splotching to them on their undersides. Also, these have grown all the way to the top um, in two days. So they, what's up, Mick? Welcome. So they were here. I, I put a mark the other day on where the lilies were. The, the highest one when I started was here. This is just erasable. But now all but one of the pads are all the way to the top. And this is a two and a half foot tall tank. So it's just incredible how quickly they grow. I know that they also use osmosis where they swell their, uh, their, the plant cells. And then that allows them to want to go visit, a, uh, aquarium at Amazon store. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Carson, uh, as soon as I'm done with this, you can message me, uh, and I'll be around. Uh, I think Rob from Flip is also going to message me. If you've heard any alerts, that's what's going on. Uh, the other thing, if you guys live in this area, I know some of you do, I have seven Iberian newts that get a foot long that are kind of hard to get a hold of, and, uh, yeah, Aquarium Zen, he did three tanks at the Amazon Spheres, building he did a giant triangular tank and like a stepped tank and then he did one more long tank in like nature style also we've got cribs in this tank these are the maliwe cribs and there are four in here and three over in that tank that i showed you over there since the other cribs died from infection and stuff like that or whatever it was, a virus, where nothing else got sick except the cribs. I want to make sure it's super safe, so I did put a baby in as a canary in a coal mine, as, as I said. What kind of quarry is that? So, where are we, where are we looking? Here is a quarry. When are you going to start summer tubbing? I'm in the south, so it's going to be a few weeks. Uh, yeah, you could probably do it now in the south. I mean, with certain things like uh, white cloud minnows or... Um, even some guppies and stuff like that can withstand it. Uh, Neocaridina have overwintered if as long as it's subtle. Um, but yeah, so here we've got Corridor Hebrosis, well-known little, uh, not the dwarf or pygmy quarry, but it's known as a miniature quarry. It, it's actually smaller than some of the dwarf and pygmies. I've got six of them in here. They're happy as little clams. And then we also have uh, the mean old gudgeon that hates everyone and bites everyone. But we have a ton of red cherry shrimps that were my cold uh, shrimp. And they're doing just fine hanging out amongst everything in this crazy jungle of a tank right now. We've got a 60 watt LED total on here. They're Cree LEDs. No CO2 in this tank, believe it or not. I do have root tabs, but I don't have active substrate other than that. Um, it's in the 50s, so I have plants out so far. Yeah, I mean, in the 50s, if you bury your tubs, um, there's a lot, like the cloud minnows will probably withstand that, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, you can only tub a few months in in Seattle. But I wanted to show you, too, that I don't know if the color is showing up so great, but it's like a blazing pink and fire red here. And it's, let's see if we can get it to the color to be more extreme somehow. Uh, but this is Rotala Wallachia coming in from Aquarium Zen. Looks real good. Uh, Steve, the owner of Aquarium Zen, and I have talked a little bit, and he was talking about getting me some uh, ADA substrate for this to grow the plants better. Um, also, so this this lily with the crazy tie-dye purple leaves 
it will grow and then it sends out runners, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you can't pollinate the flower from flower to flower. So it only spreads via the bulb splitting off or from runners, and that makes it kind of limited to these isolated pockets. Which also brings me to our next awesome plant that I only was able to get a tiny little cutting of, and that is the Ludwigia X Lacustris and Ludwigia if you are inclined to speak the German way. Uh, but this is a cool red plant that has a four, four tier, like there's four leaves that come out at each level. Very hardy stem, and this is another hybrid that's actually from North America all through the Appalachians and down to Georgia, from Rhode Island to Georgia. And it has orange fire red pink and yellow and it doesn't it only like one in a few hundred pollinate correctly by flowering which is a little yellow flower and it actually um just breaks off as a stem plant you can see the color better there there we go and uh so i really am excited to have that one steve finally i was able to talk him into getting a clipping of his display plant and this Lily is actually uh, his dis one of his display plants that was uh, a big time like uh, eye catcher in the store, and so I was able to talk him into that once he set up the display differently. But it's cool because it plays tricks on your eyes with the color. Like it looks just like this. That is just as purple as this leaf. It's just the angle of the light that makes the difference. So other quarries in this tank. We've got the Corridora Julii that you can kind of see through there. There's five of them in here. They've been in here since the tank started, essentially, and some of them are pretty chunky. And then we also have, I don't know where they are right now, but we've got five quarries that you can see from, <clears throat> you can see them in other videos of mine, but they are, why don't we throw in some food? That's always fun to watch this tank eat anyways. So hold on one sec. Let me leave you for one moment. We'll, I'll set you up to be looking at the tank. Oh, by the way, I have a bunch of plants that were traded and, and given. And so I will be working on those, sorting them out, and putting them into new tanks and things, propagating them. We have our big local auction coming up. And that should be super cool and an opportunity to make a little bit of money off of the stuff that I've done. I just cleaned up. Hello all, tanks look great. Want to sell any of your low-tech plants? Let me or I normally get them from Dustin. Yeah, I do sell uh, plants, so message me. I also started, I forgot to mention to you guys, started an Instagram and a Facebook uh, group so if you search for the secret history living inside your aquarium or living in your aquarium uh, there is now a group so feel free to join that I would love it if you guys could share pictures of your creatures in your tanks like that is the point YouTube I feel like I don't get to see your side of the story as much and so it's a place for us to have a maybe easy, more easily tracked conversation as well as then from there I can kind of do uh, contests and things like that, update it a little better since sometimes the comments and links get buried on YouTube for a lot of people. Does the shrimp mate and populate in that tank with all those types of fish? Yes, it does, but it's because I set it up really specifically for that. Um, yeah, I can put a link in the description at the end of this, um, definitely. Uh, the other thing, so this Iwagumi tank was completely overgrown last week, if you recall, in the live stream or any videos. I've trimmed it way back, and so I've got some Pogo Stemmen Erectus that's, uh, growing well in there, and some Wallachia. This one does have CO2. Also, it has one lily pad. I was told that the lily pads don't grow on their own, like away from, that the lily pads wouldn't grow with, uh, without the bulb and the mother plant. But so far, it's growing vertically in the tank, which is a good sign. 
I'm happy about that. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you do like it. If you don't, then don't. Uh, this is my blue Neo Caradina tank, and hopefully Rob from Flip will be sending over some more blues. Then I can really get this tank repopulated. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so it doesn't have roots yet, which is weird. So that's that osmotic expansion that I was talking about. So lilies have the ability to, in their cells, as all plants do, expand greatly, kind of like a mushroom does. And so that stem is able to reach even without real growth. But it's also purling up top with the CO2 running. Also, some of the Wallachia is purling a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so this is the Tiger Endler tank. I was going to show you if they're around. Everybody kind of hides this time of night. In the morning, they're all active, all my CPDs, all my Danios. This is a lower grade blue here. I'm really trying to get the, the more, like, electric blue. And this tank, I just trimmed everything so you could see the rocks again but I want to keep it dense enough down here with the crypts and stuff that the baby shrimp will survive because I have two buried females but I do have a lot of snails in here and sometimes baby shrimp and snails uh, turn into um, a lunch date if you know what I mean same with fish eggs then we've got the dark end of the blue spectrum, so I need to get some more consistent ones in there. Let's feed that other tank, as I was talking about, so you can see the other quarries. And hold on one sec, I just don't want to drop what I'm holding, so sorry if we were on view. Other thing, for downstairs on the rack, I have a new uh, tank, so I need to get a CO2 regulator for that. Um, and yeah, CO2 regulator, and then I can set it up to all my racks. So yeah, there's this tank. This is my favorite, like in hardscaping, but I should have done some sort of active substrate and just carpeted it with only a few plants. Instead, it is like Noah's Ark of random plants in there. So <laughs> whatever. Um, but let's, let's feed... Let's feed the, the little ones, or the big tank, I should say. I know the food is in your way. I'm sorry. It's dark. Betsy probably likes that. She's less dizzy. All right. Let's feed them. So the, this crowd can annihilate food fast. So they're going to go nuts in a minute here. And I put in a ginormous pinch of food, and... Out of nowhere, I mean, you see all these fish that just come running or swimming, and they are all real competitive. This tank is beyond capacity, but because of the plants, it does just fine. The nitrates are always at zero. In fact, I have to supplement them because of all the plants, so the fish can't poop fast enough. But down here, oh, here's the catfish I wanted y'all to see. So that, well, he didn't want to be seen, apparently. But those were from the wet spot, and they are a wild-caught catfish, Corydora. They look like the emerald green and gold catfishes, but they are not, apparently. They have a purple color. All your tanks on power filters? Um, so I have sponge filters on everything downstairs, and then I have a sponge filter and a hang off the back upstairs. And then this tank has a hang off the back, but I've been using smaller hang off the backs as I've matured the substrates. Now this barb that's in here is cherry barb has, then there's that catfish. Um, the, the barb that's been in there, I couldn't get out when barbs were picking on all of my baby guppy fry way back when I started the tank. And I never caught him, and so he thinks he is a ember tetra, and he hangs out with them, and then whatever, that's fine. But so I was asked about how the shrimp are propagating in a tank with such uh, vicious mini sharks, these lemon tetras and the, the neon black tetras. 
uh, which are neon black and blue technically. They're, they're wild caught also from the wet spot. So they have just a little more flair than normal. That's why I bought them. They're just kind of cool. Uh, and then the real threat to the shrimp are the gudgeons and the catfish to the baby shrimp. But this whole tank is set up with angles. So the dense help plants will help. There's lava rock with all sorts of holes and it's stuffed with java moss under under everything and then there's a root system that's pretty elaborate well i guess it's, let's see if we can shine on it so the root system you can see things scurrying in between the cracks of everything and then there's spaces that are intentionally too narrow for fish and all of that means that i get all of the fish poop and everything coming to the edges of the tank and settling down here and so that's where all the plants are planted, if you notice, is along those rock ledges. And so everything kind of slides down into these gullies, and then I have plants there. Same with over here, there's rocks, rocks, wood, and then everything slides down to the base. And then I have root tabs in there too. Uh, but that's kind of how this tank set up. This wood may not stay in here. I just wanted to sink it. I got this big old piece you can see with my hand. I mean, like it's a it's a good sized piece of spider wood. It goes all the way down there, reaches all the way back about ten inches. But um, I I got that at the wet spot. It was six bucks as compared to up here in Seattle. Definitely not what they charge. They charge like ten. To, $30, which is kind of absurd in here. Uh, yeah, so I've got that. I've got a video on making hides with pebbles. So you take uh, increasing size rocks and like this would be your big one and then you'd use a bunch of medium ones and leave space for shrimp nurseries. That works well. I'm just surprised how bold some of these small shrimp are. They just come out and nom down in plain sight. But they've gotten so much better color being in a big tank and having to swim away. I mean, don't get me wrong, they get nipped at sometimes and things like that. But yeah, now the last plant that I have that is kind of a harder one to get is a um, Myriophyllum uh, matagrosine. And uh, oh, sorry about the shaking, guys. Uh, but that is in a culture, and this is sent over from Taiwan. And it looks kind of like parsley, but it grows in, if you can see it, with kind of fern-looking shapes and in a parsley-like consistency. That's intended to be used with killifish spawn in the future. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and liking and subscribing. Here's that cat. Oh, really? These catfish, it's like they know. They can see well, and it's like they know when they're being filmed, and they, they don't want to be cataloged. The owner of the store, plus a friend of mine who's an ichthyologist, he... Is that the same spiderwood for, uh, for your new shrimp tank you were making? No. So I actually took some of the wood out of here that's nice and seasoned, and I put Brightwell substrate and then old wood that had good uh, cultures of bacteria and all fucks or bio uh, slime on it, biofilms, and uh, used that in the shrimp tank so that they could eat. This spider wood's new enough that it has a new slime on it. And the snails hit that right away, but it's only two weeks old, so it's submerged now, but it it probably won't go in with shrimp until it's well-seasoned. I like my shrimp to have well-seasoned stuff. Also, I've got, um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The um, Aromatica uh, Hygrophilia Mar Ar Aromatica, and then there's also a... Um, Lympho, I'm sorry, I can't remember the Latin name, but Aromatica, it was all beautiful purple and everything, and even the CO2 tank, it's now converting to its water form, which is less purple, but still a cool plant, it's, uh, and that is growing really well, it's set down roots, and I'm surprised that in the low tech tank, that the Wallachia is holding its color, you can't see it, but it is a nice pink color, before I go tonight, I wanted to also 
just show you this tank because there's a possibility that this one would end up downstairs. Uh, but my wife likes the scape tanks. This one isn't scaped real well or anything right now, but ideally later it will be for these little Maliwe cribs. And they have ledges all over, which I will be sanding, uh, putting sand in there for them. And it turns out, after all this, I've been using brown and white sand in here. And cribs, apparently from the southern half of the distribution, only like dark substrate as far as that goes. Now, that doesn't mean they won't reproduce, but like they have double the chance of reproducing these kind of cribs if if they are uh, given dark substrate. So that's that's that. And then also in here we've got some black ram's horn snails, a couple assassin snails that are eating just the little guys in there, um, and the black one uh, I'll be pulling out of there. But I'm I'm trying to get one culture type of snails if I can in each tank. But I wanted to show you guys the rack. I wanted to tell you guys about the Facebook group, which is just the secret history living in your aquarium. You guys can share pictures, ask questions, yada, yada. Also, I'm going to try to get on my Instagram game a little bit more. And I'm talking to Rob tonight, talking to Steve, too, about a higher tech planted tank. So there's lots of things in the works. I haven't had a lot of money to spend on stuff, but I've been doing a lot of trading, swapping, and... Um, just mentioning people on YouTube, you know, like that are helping me out with these projects. So I'm happy to do so, uh, you know, like I need, still need to get a regulator, a dual regulator. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, did you heal the fish or is he, he passed away, I'm afraid to say. But what I do want, last thing I'm going to say before I log off, because I want to spend some time with my wife, is so he passed away. And what I did, and good night, Betsy, you take care, is I put him into soil, and I will be starting aquatic immersed plants out here as the weather gets nicer. And I've already experimented with this on the small scale. So, where are they? So these two plant deals, I used old filter medium and dead fish. I hate to say it, but I did it. And they're growing phenomenally. So you can see this one, they all start at the same height. This one is a good eight inches for, to the bottom of the bowl. And then I'll walk slowly, cover it because people get sick. But then we've got, um, in here, they've been in the windowsill with Easy Green growing straight from water. And they're more red, but they haven't grown in height. Like, they've grown, I don't know, three inches or four inches, and they're denser. So it works, and I'm going to try to grow immersed plants from the body of those cribs that I cared about so much. So their life will live on. Since cribs eat uh, plants, you know, hopefully some of these plants I can immerse, and then uh, the new generations of cribs will get to uh, have caloric uh, benefits from their elders. So thank you guys so much for participating. Also wanted to just say too that uh, I appreciate the Patreon supporters. That's so kind of you guys when you do that. Um, I'll put the Facebook link in there. The Endlers are coloring up too, so that's good. But maybe downstairs we'll do like a species tank or something. I'm trying to sell that cube that's rimless. As much as I like it, I'd rather have like a 5 or 10 and um, do a, a breeding, like a real bare bones breeding tank. Because up here the tanks need to be pretty and um, presentable. Even though this aquascape <laughs> doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, it's bearable, but I don't like what it looks like right now it's way too plain for me there's not really rhyme or reason to it um so that's going to get redone also with those plants that i had laid out all right guys take care of each other take care of your fish and uh swim on i'll talk to you next time